All right, so hi and welcome. I'm so excited about the diversity and the different areas where you're all from. So hi and welcome and thank you for taking that time, um, dropping in here for the year training intro call. And uh, I hope you um, get your questions answered and um, uh, finding some uh, ideas and inspirations and um, so we have 90 minutes together uh, what I would like to guide you into is what the year training is about what the year training has all uh, in storage what we're going to do kind of some um, informations about it and if you have any question on any point um, so please feel free to ask them and um, before we start with anything, I would like to start with the core exercise of somatic consent. I invite you to take something in your hand and get comfortable in your seat where you are at. So just for a moment to just make contact with that, what you have there in your hand. And your mind is still busy from the day or still busy with the rest of the evening. That's all good. So welcome your busy mind. Maybe your mind is still, that's good too. And I welcome you to Yeah, make a haptic connection with that object. So what is about the temperature and um, the density? Is it rough or is it smooth and light or heavy? So whatever there is, so that you just make connection with the, with the data, with the information. And it doesn't matter how fast you go when you move, I invite you to slow down your speed by half and by half again. And you might even stop completely with moving. So that your movements are kind of micro movements. Now what we're looking here for is a pleasant kind of sensual experience. Like a joyful sensation on your skin somewhere on your fingertips or on your palm or where it feels kind of pleasant. And we do that for about three, four minutes or so. So where you don't have to reach anywhere. So you don't have to give anything or don't have to provide anything. Just to feel and sense. So that place where there's nowhere to go or nothing to reach. It's not where you follow your impulses of action. Just as simple as it gets. 
just you and your experience in your skin. Nothing more, nothing less. Hmm. And then I invite you to slow down till you stop or stay in the movement, whatever you like. You might have your eyes open and Bring your attention back to the screen or your eyes are closed and slowly orientate yourself somewhere in the room and bring your attention back. And as far as I know, each and one of you has done this exercise at least once. <laughs> so, most of you know that this little exercise, it doesn't matter what that is, is one of the core stones of this entire thing that I'm teaching, somatic consent. And what happens is when we do that, we literally create, uh, or we don't create, we activate a neural pathway in our nervous system that is rewiring our entire capacity to respond. And what happens is we start to feel deeper, we start to feel more subtle, and that the consent part of the entire system is just like putting a language on top of this experience. And I come to know this over the years that I could literally recreate my entire self, my identity around that again and again and again. And I could just drop into a deeper space of myself that is beyond any conditioning. So some of you know a little bit about my story already. So I would like to share a little bit more. Um, so about 20, I think three years ago, almost, I had something called a tantric awakening. And this tantric awakening was that I woke up to more subtle energies of my entire body and my entire energy system um, that was beyond the conditioning of conventional sexuality, conventional relationship, conventional ideas, how to engage and relate with other people. So that um, guided me on a journey of 10 years of exploring everything that I could find in the world on um, um, love and, and Tantra. So I uh, was really dedicated and um, uh, yeah, traveled a lot and met all the people I wanted to meet to just guide me deeper into that till I came in I think in 2012 in I think it was something like that into a workshop where somebody was giving around a visual of the wheel of consent and I started to um, look at that uh, visual and thought that's really interesting and specifically this capacity of I can do something that is for myself and at this time I was already a professional practitioner and a facilitator so I was teaching workshops and uh, did one-on-one -on -one sessions so sexual empowerment session and sexual pleasure session with uh, men women and couples and um, my workshops were kind of experiential based on sexual sensual relational experiences around people who they want to relate and the experience that they want to have. So I uh, started to explore and um, experiment with this dynamic of just doing it for myself and got in a space where I started to get really confused because um, I did not have the distinction between um, the direct experience when I'm doing for myself when I'm touching somebody and the respond that I wanted to have from another person when I touch somebody. So these two distinctions um, are the um, 
Segway, the you know when there is a fork in the road, they're they're guiding in two different directions. And so I started in 2014 um, to study with Betty Martin and went straight into this road of the direct experience of my skin and started to feel and explore and discover and went um, yeah, almost six years on um, mentorship with Betty Martin and got uh, educated in facilitation in in um, uh, teaching this dynamics about consent, communication, and uh, yeah, I learned a lot of stuff about the nervous system and how everything works in the body and how we can relate with this dynamics. And started in 2019, um, my own path, what you find now as somatic consent that some of you might have heard. And I went a level deeper after that. So I started to, um, ask different questions. So what is this dynamic of the indirect route? So when we're doing something um, and we want to get a response back that um, is not a shadow, it's not a survival mechanism, it's not that we do to get a satisfaction out of the other person's response so that we have all this neurologically, the capacity of our um, way of tuning into other people from an empathetic and um, um, place of compassion where we could feel in other people. So where this doing something to somebody within their desire that our capacity of getting a response is a super skill to have to engage and relate with another person. So I dig deeper into that and created a modality that is for practitioner um, to feel into other people while they're working with them um, and being capable of tuning into neurological responses. So you have my, some of you have heard about the mirror neurons and um, uh, how we can relate with other people's um, experiences when we are capable of feeling ourselves into other people. So based on this dynamics, I uh, created this entire platform, Somatic Consent, and um, have created different workshops. Uh, one of them is the Consent Lab. I uh, have educated practitioner in a modality that calls the Empowerment Massage. Um, there are different uh, structures uh, to the work where the first level is the foundation of somatic consent where I invite people in to have this experience and into the depth of the three minute game um, how to engage with other people and start playing with that into a next level how can we use these dynamics in relationship structures so how do we build relationship and what are the building blocks of relationship that are actually functional and not based on the romantic dream or assumption-based relationships, more on relationship, how they are formed based on the negotiation and agreement that two individual consenting adults want to have with each other. And then entering a space of that I call the bliss state in a neurological um, uh, function to um, have a transformative experience and not only by coincidence but by choice and by choice by knowing how to enter that place up to how practitioner can literally teach individuals and couples in this dynamics of educated practitioner and facilitator how to do that over the uh, last oh, about four or five years so one important piece that I've learned um, in the last year and a half was the dynamic, the roots and the core of the three minute game. And that's a little bit of a difference the way how the wheel of consent is taught. So I um, changed my mentorship from Betty Martin to Harry Fettis and another male practitioner, his, his name is Clinton Callahan. And they are both um, uh, yeah, highly, I highly recommend to check them out. They're really awesome as well. And Harry Fettis was talking about something that he called in the dynamic of taking 
that you find in the wheel as giving your gift of power. So when we are in a position of power, what I call like an interpersonal space of love and care. So when I'm in a position of power and I'm with other people that are in a position maybe of less power, that specifically when it comes to practitioner and facilitator engagement, that it's my responsibility in the position of power to give my gift of power for the other person's experience to have a transformative um, outcome out of that as far as they choose. So this is the dynamic that's really, really important in this structure of the indirect route that we cannot give our gift of power when we don't know what our power is. So when I talk about the year training, this is literally what I would like invite people into that you find your individual position of power and what that meant. Where is power in relationship to the shadows? Where and how are we unconscious in our power and our shadows where we cannot really see that and where we as a group of people mirroring each other where our shadows, our power is not in the right place and where our gift of power is not really given because we might be afraid of that. So, um, few words about um, the year training in itself. Um, it is a, um, a three module training of six days with um, all together 10 online calls where we sit together like here now, where we talk about that, what we found um, after the training. And um, in the training itself, there are um, four different dynamics woven through this entire training, what is the foundation of somatic consent, so that everybody can learn how to embody the structure of the engagement system and how to teach this, the, the foundation. Uh, the second course is the four pillars of intimate relating, so how relationship is built in there. So how do we relate with each other and how relationship is created so that everyone who is doing the training can literally engage with other people in this structure and then the practitioner dynamics or the practitioner intensive how to use that work as a practitioner that we can empower clients into the choice about the experience that they want to have yeah and that there are different steps in there um, um, i might talk about that if anybody would like to know that and the the function of facilitation facilitation of individual spaces one-on-one, -on -one, the function of facilitation when we teach couples. So when we in, uh, invite and guide a pair into this work and then facilitating groups. And that includes as well the consent lab and includes the foundation of somatic consent and the relationship course. So this is woven through all three modules and um, my intention for everyone who's getting out of this year training, as I've written that today, are really razor blade sharp assessment skills, having your sensory inflow fully activated that you have a full distinction between what's the direct and what's the indirect, that you have actually sensual, emotional and sexual fluidity in your body that you're totally capable of expressing your boundaries and your limits wherever they are and um, creating a communication system that you are capable of communicating in any situation what your desire is and what you want so that you have a very clear bridge in communication there. And um, the quality of 
your touch will definitely go through the roof because you will have a deeper embodiment of your capacity to touch. Uh, just like a little bit of a frame, a little circle. And um, that training in itself has uh, four certifications. One certification is the empowerment practitioner so that you can guide individuals in a specific modality, um, the empowerment massage that is built in five different levels. There is a certification about the consent lab that you can guide people in a little group online or live into a space where people can choose to have an experience with other people that they choose to have. So we will have a lot of consent lab experience in that year training. There will be a certification about the three day workshop foundation of somatic consent so that everyone can um, guide a group of people into the experience of the somatic consent engagement system. And of course, they're all built above another. So I imagine that everyone has their own state of development. So that the fourth certification is literally um, teaching um, couples in the workshop how to use the dynamics in um, relational dynamics. So these are the four certifications that are coming with the training. And the last but not least piece is the ambassadorship. And that's what I really am feeling really excited about that I um, will offer every person who is really dedicated and want to dive deeper into the dynamics to get um, uh, certification for the country to educate facilitator. And um, so the prerequisite for this uh, ambassadorship is, uh, of course, attending the year training and um, have successfully uh, um, gotten into all four certifications. So the practitioner, the lab, the foundation and the relationship so that you can literally teach the workshops in your country and you can do that without the ambassadorship. But if you want to educate facilitator and teaching it in your country, then it guides you into the ambassadorship. And um, but I will talk more about that um, in the training or if anybody has a certain question about that. So that was it in a nutshell. If that's a nut, that was the nutshell. And um, my question to you at this point, what is your takeaway that you have gotten so far with working with this dynamics? And I know some of you have been working with the inflow and the structure of the three minute game and asking for what you want and expressing your limits and your boundaries. What's your aha, what's your takeaway? So what's your deepest gifts that you have gotten out of it? And where and how would you like to get more of? What are you curious about? What are you interested in? And all questions are welcome. So most of the time, everyone has a similar question. So please ask your question in any form. And I guess and imagine that there are similar questions in other people so that they will be hopefully answered. All right. It's yours if you want to share anything. So I would like to ask in the first place, any question or what's your main gift that you've gotten so far or what would you like to get out of the training if you're interested in? <clears throat> oh, I'll, I'll say things that I've noticed that I've gotten out of my association with um, wheel and then somatic consent. Um, for me, I've come to understand about myself things that I've seen more dramatically in people that I know. But um, I would say for me, like maybe a lot of people, the taking quadrant, identifying that, and, and stripping away all four one at a time. 
um, really seeing the dynamics of that and hearing all the chatter in my psyche about the taking quadrant and um it, it went it surprised me at the beginning of the training how um psychologically deep and how, how it stopped me kind of in my tracks and surprised me that some small three minute game with hands between two people can, can dive in and grab you so hard. Um, but the benefit after the shock of realizing how much was happening in that taking quadrant, um, the more training that happened, the more, the benefit I got was I lost the fear of, of stealing uh, pleasure when working with people. I, I, I came to realize that as I got comfortable taking my consensual turn taking and, and realizing the validity of that feeling that um, I wasn't I allowed myself now to feel the people I'm working with much deeper and much more completely and not feeling like, Oh, I sh am I feeling them up now? Am I feeling them that, that I really can take a kind of say like curiosity based pleasure in touching them and feeling how uh, their tension moves up and down their meridians and all through their body. Cause I know I'm not going to be, I know I'm fully capable of holding somebody's arm and feeling the tension in their genitals if I pull on their arm in a certain way. But I also know that I'm not going to do that because I'm, I have my opportunities to do that when it's appropriate. And I'm not denying myself that because of these fears of the taking quadrant. And now that that is um, exercised in a healthy way, I feel much more courageous is not exactly the word, but let's say fearless about really feeling the people I'm touching when I'm in a therapeutic setting because I, I'm not worried about myself. Mm. So I would say that's one benefit that really has made the most difference to me. Mm. I mean, I've been traveling around the world uh, so many times and I've seen so many modalities and I've so, seen so many different disciplines and practitioner and facilitator. And what I, what I come to notice is the... Um, undeniable truth that we all specifically in touch modalities and i'm inc i'm included in them that we are really good in giving so we are really good in tuning into people so most of us who has the superpower skill kind of the of the indirect route and being capable of tuning into people's responses and being with them and guiding them into a deeper space of themselves. When it comes to direct route, when we are intimate with other people, and I'm one of them, we are all touch dyslexic. We are all feeling dyslexic. We are all in a place incapable of going into this modality of touch and feeling ourselves on somebody that is not sexual and that's not romantic relationship based. So what the training is literally pointing at is an emotional fluency to establish when we are with other people that the, the access point in feeling other people authentically, emotionally, physically, is based on the direct route. And um, as we, and I including myself into that, have all underdeveloped somatic capacities, like I would say most of us are literally somehow between five and, I don't know, 12. <laughs> in the age of the development of our somatic capacity yeah so so we we are we are all just nearly teenagers we are all not adults in that so the capacity of going into this realm of competence of ownership of of our full capacity 
of the inflow of feeling other people and engaging in an authentic self-responsible way is, is infinite. And the way how we can grow there is um, the invitation I'm, I'm inviting people in, in this training to explore the depth of the unknown and the fear to fail. The fear to fail and going beyond that and diving in a deeper space of ourself that we don't know yet because we haven't seen it. And the beauty that I see is that there is no ending to that. It doesn't matter how old we get. We can always finding new depth and new development of engaging with other people. And what I found that the capacity of doing that, of engaging with other people in this intimate, sensual, connecting, feeling, empathetic, you know, the, 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 the beauty of the co-regulating <laughs> dynamic that is possible are based on our own capacity of how much can we love ourselves? How much can we accept ourselves? How deep are we willing to look into our own shit, into our own shadows, into our own survival strategies to get our needs met? That we sometimes think we even don't have, and we think we have it somewhere and well hidden, but everybody else can see it. And just being brave enough to be exposed and showing it from the vulnerable space that is so hard to reach for most of us. That's my invitation. Any reflections, any questions on this point? Anything that anybody has a certain intention that you would like to learn or that you want to get out of the training and um, any question around that that would really enrich your life if we cover that and that I could say, yes, we do that. You are in the right place or no, this is not what we cover. You need something completely different. <laughs> Mav, I have a question about the online training between the, um, the six-day sessions. Yeah. Uh, is there a syllabus of, um, of uh, work that we'll be reading and are there exercises and will we need to do work with other people in our communities and what might that involve? Um, yeah, so, so there, there will be homework, yeah. And after the first module, and of course, after, after the second module, different homework, but the main thing is to start working with people one-on-one -on -one in this dynamic of the empowerment massage. So, so the idea is that, and, and it becomes really self-explaining when we are capable of being with another person in one-on-one -on -one and we know what receiving is we can let the other person find what receiving is because we know our own limits. So when, when we do that with a person one-on-one, -on -one, we have a certain learning. And with difficulties or maybe blockages or whatever we want to call them, you can come in this online course and ask questions. So this is part of the homework is doing one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one experiences. And because if we are good in the one-on-one -on -one dynamic, what I know you are already, because you're already a professional, then we can guide people into a dynamic, what is the consent lab, so that we can start holding space for a group of people to have an experience with another. And what is my role or what's your role as a facilitator of a consent lab that people have the experience? And you will come as well there into um, difficulties into pitfalls, into um, uh, obstacles, and you can bring everything you don't know better or every question you have into this calls so that you literally get then from, from me and everyone else who has the same experience 
um, some feedback, you, 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 you get some ideas um, to um, yeah, dive deeper into the, into the dynamics of the, of the work. And then after the second module um, that is in Berlin, after the second module, the invitation is as well, instead of doing two hour consent labs or four hours, how, how long you ever want to do that, start offering a full day or offering two days so that you can literally guide people in the longer process of that what you have learned in the training. Does it answer that question, Paula? Mm -hmm. I have another question. I know that in the wheel they do some work with talking about working with um, teens or young people. Is it possible also with this to work with young people or are we not supposed to work with people under 18? Um, you know, the thing is, um, this is absolutely possible. So there are a few people who are already working with teenager and um, I can't educate anybody to work with teenagers or with children because I'm not qualified in doing that. I hope and I imagine if some of you has already an education being qualified working with teenager and with kids, to use everything that you learn and do that in the most responsible way. You know, there are all these kind of pedagogic backgrounds that people need to work with teenagers and with children to use that responsible. I, I can't educate people in doing that with children, but if you do it already, you totally have, have the capacity of bringing everything you learn in working with children and with teenager. Does it answer that? All right, great. I've got a quick question. Um, I haven't looked at the the dates um, yet for the three six day events. Um, are these planned out where we're assuming travel will be unrestricted and we're good, or is it a situation where if somehow we can't travel, the dates are going to stay the same and we're going to do it on Zoom? Or what's your thinking as far as physically getting together over the course of the next year? Oh, that's a really good question. And I, I hope and pray that this Corona thing is coming to an end. Um, um, I wish that we will all come together easily at any time to travel. What we need to do, so Cosima, who is organizing this uh, training, she she's really awesome in the background um, uh, setup. So there, 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 there will be um, um, PDFs about what you need to travel where and, and how to do that. Partly is we will not have a restriction for vaccination. So nobody has to be vaccinated to come to their training, but everybody who comes has to have a Corona test to jump in an airplane. Yeah. Nobody has to have a Corona test and show that into our face. We assume when you are on the plane, you have to have a Corona test to travel. Yeah. So this is a prerequisite. And, um, and then we will have um, at the training some papers that everybody is taking full responsibility about their own health and uh, touch and connection with other people. I think we will come together and we can do that training. Um, I was just now in a training here in Portugal with Clinton Callahan. We were 40 people from all over the world, um, America, Israel, Italy, French, uh, from the Balkans, you know, just like Germany, so many people, and it was easy, and everybody took full responsibility about their own uh, choices of touch and connection and exercises, and that went really well. I just did end of um, May in Estonia, where I was, the uh, armoring training, and that was the same thing, so people can travel. So we will provide as well um, um, a paper or a PDF, if you need that, that this can be travel for work. So if there are difficulties and um, I don't 
assume we will not come together in person. <laughs> Um, that's much a question, uh, observation. I've enjoyed watching um, other people go on the course, like before and after, as it's appropriate to mention any names or those that are completed. No names. Perhaps I won't, because it's not, yeah, I've just yeah, checked in with myself and the consent, thank you. Um, yeah, I was, I'm inspired by the before and after effects and um, seeing the confidence and the personal development and I was thinking, oh, I'd like some of that. Um, I'd like some of that uh, confidence and uh, skill sets to see um, my colleagues escalate um, and be able to take, um, facilitate and see you let them take the whole session sometimes on our things like our Saturday mornings and what have you. So yeah, I've enjoyed watching vicariously really thinking wow look at them grow and fly mm. yeah that's 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 my intent my question would be what's your skill set and what's the confidence that you got of it got out of it but maybe in a second but um this is my intention to work with people is you know i like this dynamic of leadership mm -hmm. that um leaders create more leaders not followers so that's my intention with the work. I just want people to become leader of themselves and leader of others to create more leaders. So this is what I intentionally do is um, I want to inspire and empower people to empower other people. Mm. Yeah. So and that, yeah, that was definitely a quality that they come out with. They are empowered and you can yeah. see the before and after. Yeah, it's lovely. So what is your skill set? What is your um, confidence that you've gotten so far? I mean, we work already since a year and a half or so, right? So mm. they showed up first. Yes, yes. I am standing up for myself uh, more. It's still hard. Uh, I'm seeing more shadows and naming shadows, particularly in family dynamic or even some work contexts friendship contexts, um, dating contexts. Um, I'm a little bumpy on the radical honesty. Uh, lost, I might have lost a potential friend or whatever. I'm not sure how, uh, yeah, landing, yeah, radical honesty. <laughs> it's sometimes a bit, yeah, harsh to hear. So maybe I do need to develop that a little more on yeah. how to, so I, at least I started to practice it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I started to practice. Um, even my poor parents in their 80s, I'm develop landing radical honesty on them of what they're actually doing, of breaking my boundaries, um, not giving me enough free time or awareness. Because um, I'm normally hanging out with my parents mostly. Um, no, he, heaps of, of growth, you know, yeah, I've been on most of the Saturday morning calls and yeah, I must have grown in confidence, but yeah, I haven't, I'm probably a little reticent on ever taking leadership and maybe facilitation. So seeing how you were able to enable the others to facilitate and the way I was thinking, oh, it might be a way of learning some leadership skills mm. and incorporating it into my life. Mm. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I just noticed, I think I lack my leadership because I've been uh, uh, somewhat uh, crushed in the family dynamic of that I dare step up and be powerful. So I've just, yeah, noticed that thought where has that come from that I can't take leadership? Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anne Marie. Mm. I've, I've seen mm. your hand, Paula. Paula. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I assume that everybody here is familiar with some parts of this training because otherwise they, I assume, otherwise they wouldn't be here. But um, I, I trained as a 
a somatic sex educator, which also involves sexological body work. And I didn't practice it for a, at least, I practiced it for a very short time. What I found through the foundation um, a, a calls on Saturday were two things. One, the, the constant uh, doing of the waking up the hands um, registered in my mind much more strongly um, a sense of what is my pleasure, a really strong sense of Yes, there is something that my body really wants and desires, and it's mine. An understanding that pleasure is mine. Nobody can give me pleasure. That was one of like the really big awakening. And nobody can really give my pleasure is my pleasure. It's in me. And I think the most important thing for me was that it's very important for me to um, talk to other people, to other mostly women about um, finding agency and um, accepting um, the importance of being able to receive either through other people giving them or through themselves. And there was a place where until I really practiced this uh, morning sessions, the minute, it, 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 the minute you've experienced it deeply, it's easier for you to explain to other people what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The more deeply you experience it, the more clear it is to articulate it because we don't really have words mm -hmm. for what we're talking about. There's no language here. Like we have an incredible language about, you know, sports and we have language about food and we have language about culture, but there isn't language about touch, what it feels to me and what it feels to you. And so, maybe we're creating this language, maybe we're creating this culture of touch. I'm just, I, I agree with what uh, Dan said earlier. I mean, I just think this is essential. I would like to work with young people as well. That's why I asked. I don't have a certificate to work with teens, but I think that the younger we address the issues of consent, agreements, limits, the easier it will be for them to enter adulthood Mm. Rather than thinking it when they were adults and having to undo everything that they didn't learn, and that's why I asked the question. But I'm not I'm not qualified to work with youth, mm -hmm. and I also agree with Dan. I mean, I would like to see, you know, ten years from now that you know, tens of thousands of people in this country would have, you know, have experienced a consent lab or understand the basics of consent. Yeah. I'm very impressed. You said, and you know, Matt, I. I really, truly, truly believe in what you're doing. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for letting, letting me speak. Yeah, thank you. Anybody, anybody who hasn't spoken want to say anything or share anything? What's your finding? What have you found? What is your aha uh -huh takeaway? What, where would you like to dig deeper into? Um, where is it difficult for you? What, what would enrich you? So. I have one more sentence I forgot. It was very, very, very important. Women are socialized everywhere around the world to um, help men to be, um, to be in service to men, that men's lives, men's sexuality, men's pleasure should be their, their, their focus. The idea of indirect pleasure, I would be happy if I see um, that my partner only male partner is is uh, happy and so women have denied themselves the sense of knowing what they want and saying what they want which is mm. why i think this is a very feminist um empowering um mod uh, modality yeah i i, 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 I totally i'm a long time pro-sex feminist but i'm in a world with many anti-sex feminists, anti-pleasure, <laughs> anti-porn, anti... So I want to say that as a long-time feminist activist, this is a pro-feminist modality. I love that. Thank you very much for saying that because I see myself as well as an activist. And I hope with this word, uh, work, um, 
I can um, do my contribution to ending this unfunctional patriarchy where we all suffer from. <laughs> and the sooner the better. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I was just going to share a little bit about my um, experience of working well since you invited me into this. Um, so I met Matt, I don't know how many years ago now, Matt, it was like five, six years ago, something like that. It was 2015. Um, 15, okay, yeah. And so, um, yeah, you came into a workshop and where there was the lack of clarity around who, who is it for, um, which I think is just a, something that's a very common dynamic within sort of what we see as in the modern neo-tantra theme of things and, and just that confusion um, around who are things for and and I guess my journey in 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 this work has been yeah very empowering I think it's just yeah it's the center of everything it's like you know I work with it with clients now for, for some years and I see the changes happening in them but I also see the transformation that's happened in myself where the habit where I used to have of you know, I thought I was really empowered and I thought I was really clear and I thought I was really direct and then kind of doing this work and going, oh, shit, no, actually a lot of that's really uh, pleasing people. It's, 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 you know, recognizing the lack of integrity with my own being. And the beginning of the journey was really fucking hard, <laughs> excuse my language, because of like recognizing how far that bypassed in myself, how deeply rooted that was. And, 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 you know, having been taught, you know, how to relate in shadow, you know, and it's like, well, how do you not relate in shadow, you know, that, that, that untangling all of that stuff that we can be conditioned with. Um, but it was actually really lovely, like I went for a massage the other day and, uh, and, and it was really lovely just in the saying goodbye to the lady and it was just this reflection that I could see that because I'm so clear now, she was like, God, it's just so nice to be in your company. You're so clear. And I was like, wow, that really, it was just made me recognize how, how far this work has gone, if you know what I mean, and that ability to be able to be really direct of, and, and also the self-responsibility, you know, because in the world we've kind of heard a lot where there's that, oh, there's that thing I'm a little bit uncomfortable in myself, so I kind of see if I can make you responsible for it, because then I don't have to be kind of thing, you know, and, and, I don't know if that feels true for others, but I can definitely recognize that that was true for me at one point. Um, yeah, and just how, how empowering it is to go, oh, no, okay, actually, I'm, I'm responsible for what shows up. And, and if not what I want is showing up, then, then it's down to me to change that. Um, mm. Yeah, so I'm very grateful for uh, you introducing me into this stuff, Matt. Mm. Uh, I can speak a little bit. Uh, uh, so. I am. I am. Um, I have not been so much a facilitator, and uh, but uh, but anyway, it's. Um, uh, I have seen your work uh, uh, quite many years already, so it has been all the time very interesting, and uh, now when I saw this uh, course also, uh, so so um, uh, yes, I am very interesting interested to work uh, on that field. But uh, also right now, it's uh, quite different what I do right now. So maybe for a little bit, I have to end one project first. And then, so I have not decided yet, but, uh, but I know it's very needed in Estonia. And, uh, and also because I am uh, self, uh, I can speak, but then I have to have something to say. So it's not only shyness, uh, uh, but but uh, also uh, uh, I know it will help in very different way. Also, uh, people uh, who who don't know what they want. Also, it's it's uh, with my myself a big. Uh, a big question so so it's uh, helping it's a way how to figure out different things and it has been uh, uh, for good help for myself uh, so so um, i find it's a, a unique and very clear way 
So, so it's because I not really love it and uh, like it. So, so we will see how we can go further with it. So, mm, yeah. I am very interested. So, you don't need to be a facilitator or a practitioner to come into the training. Everybody is welcome. And there are mm. different benefits when people want to work with people or are working already. But this is not limited to a practitioner and facilitator. Yeah. But you will learn a lot of practitioner and facilitation skills that you can use everywhere in your life when you facilitate a conversation with a colleague in a, in a business. So there's another person from Estonia I was working with who wanted to create out of the somatic consent engagement system a, a communication tool. And just mm -hmm. allowing the communication dynamics there are possible and capable of um, uh, negotiating what is an invitation, when to make an offer, what is the request, what is the shadow com communication, up to mm -hmm. that we sometimes need a dynamic of communication in a hierarchical structure. For example, you know, in the in the operation theater, so in the surgery room in the hospital, you need a hierarchy and you need clear orders. In some dynamics, mm -hmm. we, we cannot afford um, to make a request or making an offer if somebody's giving you a tool to save somebody else's life, you know? So, so what's the mm -hmm. level of con conversation and communication we can all get and creating an understanding when is what needed? So, 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 so there's there's a lot of variety that you can use in any in any way. So you don't need to be a facilitator. That's what I want to say. Oh yes, yes, I understand that. Yes, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Thank you. Anybody sitting on the question two? I can't hear you, still no sound. Yes. No. Can you hear me now? No, no, we hear you, yes. Okay, so, one, two, three. Mm. Uh, recently, um, I have a lot of experience with um, the workshop uh, with the body, like your cause, and also the authentic movement that I the Saturday call and um, I really now I'm really aware that the body is the gateway to the spiritual awakening and I have so much interest in learning anything that relates me um, the only thing that I like now is confidence so the confidence from myself and also um, somatic consent is really something new in my country. Uh, yeah, so if I want to become a facilitator in my country is uh, in Vietnam, it's an Asian country and people are not really open and it's not an easy topic to, to discuss and to talk about. So I don't know if this course is, um, how can I say, do you have a specific approach for different cultures? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. And the first thing that comes into my mind about your confidence is that you can become really confident in being insecure or unconfident. Yeah. So, 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 so that, that showing up confident by not feeling secure is actually the entrance into shyness and vulnerability. And that's actually really beautiful. It's a superpower skill that most people are missing and that I had to learn the hard way again. So I, I want to say that in this, in this regard, you are a teacher and that's, that's very, that's, that's very, um, beautiful to see that because I could learn a lot from you being um, 
confident in not being confident. That's beautiful. So the approach that, that I would have in, so I had people from Vietnam already, and there was a person from Vietnam who asked me to translate this, the structure into Vietnamese. I think, I don't know if I've done it. I, I, I have to look in my, in my stuff. I think it hasn't happened. He wanted to do that, but he hasn't done that. But it is translated in Chinese. So therefore it must be possible in any other language. Um, and the approach that I would have out of that course is when you learn to be with one person one-on-one, -on -one, and that's, it goes always the same circle. When you know how to engage with a person one-on-one, -on -one, then you can share what you want. And then you, you are already in a position of more confidence when you know the dynamics and the structure. And when you know that for yourself how to receive, then you can show people how to receive. So you engage with them one-on-one -on -one and you create a level of togetherness and intimacy that is already a transformation. So, and the next step, as I said that before to Paula, is when you know how to do that with a person, then you can facilitate a little group, two people or three people or four people. Yeah? What is it that you actually want? And with whom mm. would you like that with? And what's your desire and what's your limit and how to express a desire and how to express a limit or a boundary? So negotiation, the communication, and then going into the experience. And you might start with three, four people. You might start with just with one person and you just create this dynamics and then you start talking and then you have a third person and a fourth person and you 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 start small and gentle you know the way how i do that is probably really bad marketing i just go out on facebook and instagram and on the mighty network i'd say tra -ra world here i am here it is you know i use my power or the privilege of my power to throw it out in the world and say, just like, come world and get it. The way how you need to do that in your individual way, in your country, the way how you are, is different. And, I, and, and this is my approach that I can only support you individually, how it works, the way how you work and how it works in the culture you live in. And that's for every culture probably different. And I'm totally excited about finding the way for every culture how it works so there's there's there's, there's no path that's hammered in stone for every culture that doesn't work so it means that everything starts from me first yes <laughs> that's how i understand it that's true like yes yeah, i start with myself and then i start with one on one and then bigger group Yes. Regarding the cultures, uh, I th I th understand that the way that I um, I learn from you and the, the way that I understand my own culture, I can have my own way to to transfer the, the knowledge to the same culture. Yeah, yeah. You know, the beautiful thing is that. Um, as I said that before, none of us is free of um, the shadows. We all have them. And that's the, that's the beauty of not making them wrong, using that as a skill set. That when we have compassion for our own structures and strategies, that we can then create empathy for other people's structures. So when we know that this, what we do here with this feeling and, you know, and then asking for what we want, this is in the raw format of our nervous system functional for all of us the same. And the culture is just a conditioning on top of how we are as humans. And when you have a, when you have a community of people around you who are operating in confidence, that will give you that confidence to show up in a group of people we have no understanding about that, what you're providing. So you just invite 
person by person, step by step, slowly, slowly into the, into the pond and show them how to swim. Right. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, do you have a question, Anne? Um, no. So you, you mentioned the homework after the first module, the empowerment massage, then the second module. Uh, with uh, a group of, of people. And then I thought there was also a third module. Yes. Or am I? There's, there, yeah. there are three modules. So, so the second yeah. module is in Berlin and the third module is in Sweden. And in the third module, we just are diving deeper into the dynamic of relationship. And then as a facilitator and practitioner, how to maneuver the field of relationship. Okay. And there will be probably after that, because we will create in this training a, a community-like engagement. So we will literally journey together for this time. And I guess there will be even over that meetup groups or, or, or meetings where we will engage in having meetings. For example, the, the Saturday morning call the Saturday morning call got created out of the foundation calls, the foundation training that you have done. Yes. And on one point I said, this is just high value. And it's not only high value for people to ask questions and going through this process of themselves. Is this well high value for me to meet with you, with the community, just like and hearing where you are at. So as, um, and Marie said that already there are, she has seen how confident people got over this year that they know holding space for the foundation course. They will soon continue doing the foundation course so that I now can create a new meeting that is a relationship meeting. So how do we use that in relationship? That when we, when I do that now for a year, that at the end of the training, there might be a handful or two or three people say, okay, they are ready to hold space for the relationship course. So, okay. so um, um, to come back to your question, uh, yes, that's the third module. And yes, there will be um, follow-up meetings and you might even one of them who can guide a follow-up meeting. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Yeah, okay. yeah. You asked um, an aha moment, and I um, I recognize what Paula said. It's um, yeah, pleasure. It's something that uh, that's inside me. So with with the um, uh, five minutes waking up the hands, it's with an object, and yeah, it's just an object. So an object can't do something <laughs> inside you. So yeah, uh, yeah, that was a takeaway, and. Um, yeah, I can more easily see um, a shadow when I'm in the shadow. Um, yeah, and also what you said. Um, yeah, I'm, I am more. Yeah, I've learned to be more uh, have more compassion when I was in the shadow, and um, now I see that I can be. Uh, yeah, I can also have more compassion with another person who is in the shadow and 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 meeting them there and 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 start a conversation about it. Um, yeah, and also um, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's quite a, a challenge to uh, to discover what I really want. Um, it's something like. I want that. Oh no, wait, wait. <laughs> no, it's that. So it's yeah, it's it's like digging deeper, and um, yeah, um, it's getting better to to express what I want, and and um, yeah, it's nice to see to see the results of it. Um, yeah. Um, 
yeah, not all, all people will will meet me, but when when I express it, um, yeah, I have more chance to to have it than I I, I don't say anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that's great to discover. Yeah. Yeah, and mm. and and the great thing is th to learn how to engage with people just to play. You know, yeah. you know, as children, when we were little, you know, we just there's no distinction. We just go to other children and if you want to play, yeah. And where have we where have we lost that? Where have we lost the innocent of playfulness? The in innocent of playfulness to discover life in an, in a new way. So we became adults. We just put ourselves in this little box of what we think we know, and then that's it. And you know, and, and and I invite people. I invite people out to be playful again. Just be playful and and discover life and and be playful. All right. I just see we're just already a little bit over time. I just want to say one more thing that. And people ask that, so why are we doing that with the hands? Why the hands? And, you know, the hands have more nerve ending than anywhere else in your body except the mouth and the genitals. And when the hands get it, the rest of the body will get it. And the relational and sexual fluidity behind that, how to engage sexually with a, with a, with a level of confidence is, is enormous. And the level of pleasure that can be transformative is enormous. Yeah. So that's an invitation. Um, there's no ending to that. I promise that. <laughs> I definitely haven't found one. And um, yeah, my invitation to each and one of you is to be on the journey and stay on the journey of yourself. All right. Um, please copy the links. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out. If you just want to do one of this um, um, sessions, please feel free to jump in, see how that work can look like, that you're just getting a sense of that. And I would love to welcome each and one of you um, going to the application form, having a call if we are a fit, if, if this is for you. Now you've got a little bit more of an understanding what the training is. And um, that will be maximum 24 people. And um, yeah, I would love to see each one of you if that resonates with you. All right. In this sense, feel it all up. Make it all yours. And I wish you a beautiful day. And thank you for joining on this Monday afternoon. All right. Love yourself. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.